As your application progresses through its lifecycle towards production, you might find you have the need for the application to be configured differently between your dev, test and production environments. How can we handle this kind of scenario? Well, that's what we're going to have a look at today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever it is I find you, and welcome along. Today we're looking at environment settings. Consider your application makes use of an API, and that API requires an API key for security purposes. As your application moves from development to test, you'll probably find that you need to connect to a different version of the API that's also a test version, and as such, you'll probably need a different API key. And likewise, as you move across to production, you'll probably find that the API key changes yet again. So as you can see, we've got different API keys for different environments. This is considered an environment setting. So how do we deal with this kind of problem with Nux.js? Well, let's go and have a look. So let's jump over to Visual Studio and we've got our um, application running. But the first thing we're going to do is create a new file right at the root of the site um, that's going to hold our environment settings. So we are going to call that appropriately environment settings and it is a JavaScript file. And we are going to create a constant in here called global settings. And we're going to create that as an object. And then we're going to have a, a property that is also an object that represents each environment. So we'll have a development environment. We will have a staging or test or pre-prod or whatever it is you want to call it. And we will have a production environment. So we've got three separate areas where we can hold different properties. So if we create a property in here of something like site environment, just so that we can illustrate the point, what we'll do is create copies of those into each so that we have some settings and we also need to export that property out so that other parts of the application can see it and use it then that should get rid of that error okay so and we're just going to create while we're here um, just another property just to illustrate this point so just create a couple of properties that change across environments okay so we'll save that now what we need to do is go across to our one that's created it in the store we'll move it to the root we'll go to our nuxt config and in here, we need to actually bring that property file in with an import right at the top of the file. So we can import global settings from environment settings. And it's complaining that it's it's imported but never used, but we are going to correct that. Um, so that's, that's given us that in our Nuxt config. Now, um, just as an aside, um, we need to go across to our package.json and make a couple of changes and this will become um, apparent why we're doing this in a minute. So at the moment when we run our site, if I just stop this, what we're using is npm run dev and that actually runs a script here. So that's what the npm run does and then the script it runs is the script that you give it there. So it's running dev here, which then actually runs up Nuxt 
um, in its development version. So we're using these various scripts um, to do various things. Generate we're using as part of our auto build to generate the static site. So that's part of our, our GitHub action that we've got um, running. And by default, generate will um, use a value of a node M of production. So um, what we can do is we can add in a couple of extra script values into here and for these we can actually override the node environment variable so we can actually set a variable called node m we can set that to any value we like but as we're running the staging script we're going to set it to staging and then we do exactly the same as what development does so we run nuxt dev yeah, so that's doing exactly the same as that, other than the fact that it's setting this node environment variable to staging. We'll also do a similar thing, but add in a script for production. And we'll set the environment variable to production for that. And so now what we can do is instead of running npm run dev, we could do npm run staging or npm run production and that will set this node environment variable for us so now if we come back over to um, the nuxt config again we can take advantage of the fact that that node environment variable has now been set with some code that looks like this so we set up a, a constant in the nuxt config called app environment and we set it to that node environment variable so it will either be staging or it will be production or if node environment variable has not been set we will default it to development and with that in place nuxt provides a setting that we can take advantage of called public runtime config and this is specifically um, to be used for holding configuration parameters that you want to be exposed across your application that will be downloaded to the client. So these are these are things that you can use inside the browser, um, inside your templates and that kind of thing. So we can use this mechanism and we can set up um, a new property in there. And we can now reference our global settings and we can use the app m environment variable that we've set up at the top there to actually reference the right um, element out of that out of that object so if it's set to development it would be referencing environment settings development if it's set to staging it would be set to it would reference this this area so with that in mind we can then set that to site environment property from in there and we can do a similar thing for um, a telephone property as well so we can set telephone and telephone so we now have two um, kind of global variables um, set up that are pulling their the data that they're populated with from our environment variable settings based on the environment that we're actually running okay so with those in place we can go and take advantage of that and let's to, to illustrate the point let's go and um, find our footer component so the footer if you remember is is this area down here so if i save that um, and we're running, I need to run the site up again. So let's run npm run dev, run that up. And with that running, we can refresh that and we can see that that's our change down here in the footer. So if we actually changed this div,
So what we can do is we can use um, dollar config, which is the way that Nuxt allows you to reference that public um, runtime config value that we've specified over here. So dollar config is essentially takes you to this area. Then you can do dot site config. So we can do um, dot site environment. And what we're saying is if site environment has been populated with a value, then we will show site environment. So if we save all of this and let that refresh, when that refreshes, we can see that we're seeing dev down here. So that is pulling dev right through from our environment settings through the Nuxt config site environment variable straight into the template. So you don't need to do anything with um, any Vue.js um, shenanigans with uh, data methods and that sort of stuff. You can directly reference $config straight in your template. So just to just to illustrate that point, if we stop stop the site from running, and instead of running dev, we, we run staging. And when that refreshes, we'll see that change from dev to test. OK, so there you go. So that is actually working and showing that we're pulling that through. So that's that's all good if you've got a component um, that's directly using that config in its template. But what if we want to do um, something with our view X store? So something we've been doing is pulling um, some properties across so that we can reuse them in multiple parts of the site. So we've got telephone number both in the header and the footer. So we only want to specify that once, ideally. So what if we want to pull that telephone number um, from an environment setting? So say the telephone number, we don't want to specify the production number on our development sites. Um, how do we do that? So what we need to do inside our index.js is adding an action to the Vue.js and we can use a Nuxt specific action um, of the Nuxt server init um, method and this get called this gets called on the server side only um, by Nuxt but that's good enough for us because that will populate um, the the Vuex store for us when that gets pulled down to to the client with the right values in it so we add in that action and that action is calling um, a mutation called set telephone which we don't currently have so we need to go and add in set telephone as well and set telephone is setting state site properties telephone to the value that's being passed in and the value that's being passed in is coming from right up here from the config much like we did in our view template and then referencing the telephone property. So it's the telephone property of um, the public runtime config um, part of the Nux.js config. So let's just check that. So we can now um, blank out the default telephone because we're going to pull that in. And if we save that and refresh, we are currently running staging, so that's gone to 222, 222, as we would expect. But again, if we stop this and we run up, let's choose production just to prove that that's working as well. So production is, is what Nuxt will use um, when we run Nux Generate. So this would be the actual live version of our site now that we are imitating to see what, that's, what that looks like. And as you can see, we don't specify site environment for production. So we're expecting test to disappear down here. And we're expecting the phone number to change to 333-33333. And that's refreshed. And our phone number updates in both places in the Vuex store. And we lose our site environment down here which is what we want because we don't want anything down there in production so that shows how we can do different settings um, across 
different environments as our Nuxt application moves through the various stages of its development lifecycle. Hope you've enjoyed that and found that useful. Please feel free to leave me a comment and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.